Over the weekend, the Democratic president of the United States and a Republican congressman each said some very frustrating things about the looming debt ceiling crisis, which we need to unpack. Intrigued? Then click that like and subscribe, and enjoy the video. All right, folks, it's another day, another debt ceiling crisis video. We've done multiple videos about these, and I expect that that's probably not going to go away anytime soon because the economic consequences of a debt ceiling default, which is looking ever more likely, uh, would be calamitous, truly calamitous for you and me, for a lot of people here in the United States, for the globe as a whole. So as a reminder, the debt ceiling is a congressionally imposed limit on how much money the Treasury can borrow to pay bills that Congress has already demanded Treasury pay. It's about past bills, congressionally approved previous bills. It has nothing to do with future spending, future appropriations, nothing, all right? We've raised the debt ceiling 80 times in the past 60 years, and the vast majority of those times have been under Republican administrations. They are more likely to do it than Democrats. But there's a Democrat in office, and that means Republicans want to play brinkmanship. Hey, look, we're going to play chicken with the domestic and international economy. We're going to risk catastrophe for everyday Americans unless you cave to our demands, unless you bend the knee, Mr. President. Now, what would the, the consequences look like of a default? Well, we've never been in one before, but highly reputable financial firms and economic firms are speculating that it could be 8 million lost jobs overnight. $15 trillion in household wealth loss between savings and 401k and stocks. And that's not just for cities or blue states. That's also poor rural red states as well. It's, it will hit the rich and poor, red and blue. It doesn't matter. This will not discriminate. This will hurt everybody. And then, of course, because the United States is the world's you know, reserve economy, the ripple effects financially for our allies and enemies would also be severe as well. This is what's on the table. The Treasury Department is basically moving heaven and earth in the next couple of weeks to continue to try to pay the debt. Uh, but according to Secretary of Treasury Janet Yellen, June 1st is when they expect the Treasury will completely run out of money to pay the United States bills, and that's when the default will occur. And there have been quote-unquote negotiations between President Biden and congressional Republicans, particularly in the House of Representatives, over this. And the Republicans say they will not vote to raise the debt ceiling, as they did three times under Donald Trump alone, unless Biden caves to their demands. This is something we saw, we've seen under Biden twice. We saw it under Barack Obama twice at least. It was threatened under President Clinton. Meanwhile, before Clinton, you had Ronald Reagan, and Republicans under Reagan raised the debt ceiling like 18 times without any precondition. Again, the hypocrisy is inarguable. It is simply a matter of fact. It is irrefutable. The GOP is legendarily bad faith on this issue. Which brings me to a couple of clips, okay? So I'm going to play the first one in uh, Meet the Press, Chuck Todd, who we've picked on before. He is interviewing <coughs> uh, Republican Congressman Byron Donalds, who has become an outspoken, prominent uh, defender of Donald Trump and an anti-Biden uh, attacker and the halls of Congress. So they're talking about this, and let's see what Byron Donalds has to say. I want you to respond to something former President Trump said about the debt ceiling in 2019. Take a listen. I can't imagine anybody ever even thinking of using the debt ceiling as a negotiating wedge. Why don't you agree with him on this? Well, first of all, he also said the other day on a rival network uh, that he said that when he was president. And when asked why he wasn't saying it now, he said, because he's not president. Listen, Donald Trump Isn't is that, always do negotiating. Do you know how absurd that sounds? That is not absurd. He's how is that always not absurd? negotiating, absurd. Chuck. Chuck, he's always negotiating. That's what he does. Yeah. That's actually one of the reasons why so many deals for our country worked out to our benefit as compared to his predecessors, both Republican and Democrat, because he's always negotiating. But do you realize how partisan that sounds? What is, not good partisan for, what is good for me is not for thee. Listen, he's basically saying, when I'm president, president. Right. Uh, there's no negotiating on this. But hey, when somebody else is president, screw There you have it. Okay. Now note, all right, so Chuck Todd was pointing out the one clip where Donald Trump said in the past, hey, listen, you shouldn't use the death ceiling as a negotiating wedge. And he was probably just going to leave it there and get Byron <laughs> Donald's comments on that. But what's interesting is Byron Donald's went one further. And he's like, well, Chuck, he even said on CNN recently that he said that when he was president, but he's not president now, so he's saying something else, and that's the reason he's doing it. So rather than be 
rather than kind of see where the, the line of dialogue is going, Byron Donalds went one further and said, yeah, well, he was being a hypocrite, and that's okay, and then goes on to defend Trump's hypocrisy. That is what I mean when I say the Republican Party's shamelessness is their superpower. They simply don't care. Not only are they indifferent to it, now we're starting to see a trend in which sitting Republican Congress people, legislators, people with state power, are actively celebrating the hypocrisy, like actively going out of their way to point it out. Hey, hey, Chuck, you played me that clip. I've got one for you. He said something recently where he's like, look, I'm not president anymore, so I'm telling Republicans to behave hypocritically. It's their, their shamelessness is their superpower. You can't castigate them in this respect. So it's very frustrating and for, for reasons that we've described. Now, I want to quickly play another clip from President Biden over the weekend, and then we'll talk about how this relates to one another. Thank you, everybody. We have not come up with a unilateral action that could succeed in a matter of two weeks or three weeks. That's the issue. So it's up to lawmakers. So it's up to lawmakers. But my hope and intention is when we resolve this problem, I find a rationale to take it to the courts to see whether or not the 14th Amendment is, in fact, something that would be able to stop it. Thank okay, you. The press conference has all right, so that was President Biden taking a question about the 14th Amendment because we're seeing a lot more commentary on that, more and more and more people. Dozens of senators, dozens of uh, Democratic uh, Congress people are now coming out of the woodwork, publicly calling on the president to invoke the 14th Amendment, which we've discussed before. The 14th Amendment essentially saying that uh, the, the public debt of the United States shall not be questioned. Well, if Congress is imposing a sub- uh, constitutional law, what we call federal statutory law, it's subordinate, it's inferior to the Constitution, and simply telling the president, hey, look, you took an oath to, you know, faithfully execute all the, the laws of the land and to defend and protect the Constitution. The Constitution says that the public debt shall not be questioned. A law that is inferior to the Constitution um, says that Congress can only, will only authorize the Treasury to borrow so much about the public debt. And Congress is now unwilling to raise that debt, which puts you in a position. Do you, you know, invoke the 14th Amendment, part of the Constitution, which says that the public debt shall not be questioned? Or do you honor this piece of federal statutory law with Congress essentially abandoning its duty? Well, constitu many constitutional scholars and many Democratic senators and Congress people are saying, well, if Republicans put you in a position where you either honor for the 14th Amendment of the Constitution or the debt ceiling, which is inferior to the Constitution, then you got to say, well, the heck with the debt ceiling and order the Treasury to continue to pay uh, to satisfy the bills of congressionally approved debt. Okay, and that's essentially the argument. And President Biden has suggested that in the long run, he intends to look at the 14th Amendment more and more and more because he recognizes that this is an untenable position and that Republicans will continue to play brinkmanship. The frustrating thing about that clip, though, is the president's unwillingness to play hardball now. Why now? We have a right-wing conservative supermajority in the courts, and here's my concern. My concern is this. If President Biden tries to do this, the typical Democrat, by the book, just give them endless, endless line of credit, an endless line of credit of good faith, just give Republicans every opportunity no matter what they do to Democrats, no matter what they threaten to do the, to the global economy and the domestic economy, is that that would give, you know, whatever federal judge or what, you know, the, again, the United States Supreme Court, the opportunity to rule against Biden in that respect, because there would be no crisis to force their hand. What we have now is a crisis that is generated by Republicans. President Biden said months and months and months ago, Congressional Democrats and I are willing to get on board with a clean debt ceiling raise, just like we did under Trump three times. Let's do it. Let's raise the debt ceiling now. Republicans are saying, no, we will not raise the debt ceiling unless you give in to our demands about things that have absolutely nothing to do with the debt ceiling. It's extortion. It's blackmail. What we want is the president to say, you know what? You either raise the debt ceiling or I'm invoking the 14th Amendment now and I'll just order Treasury to pay debt. And Republicans will probably publicly 
freak out. Kevin McCarthy will probably be quietly relieved because he gets to avoid an economic crisis, but also say to his base, guys, I tried to blackmail the president, and he just did this unconstitutional thing, but is probably thinking, thank you, Mr. President, thank you. But that's what President Biden should do now. Invoke the 14th Amendment. Say, listen, you either do it or I'm going to continue to order. Treasury is going to pay the bills no matter what. You can either justify it with a debt ceiling raise, congressional Republicans, or we're going to do it under my authority to defend and uphold the Constitution. And then if you want to try to sue the president, if you want to try to sue me, Joe Biden, you can try to do that. And then in which case it goes up to the Supreme Court. And then I'll turn to the Supreme Court and say, hey, Supreme Court justices, the you know five of you who are conservative, do you want to try to order me into a default, which would cripple my finances, your finances, the finances of the country? Do you really want to do that? He would be calling their bluff and he'd be using the crisis that they created, that Republicans created, to essentially put them in a position to do the right thing. Because that's the thing. The only way you're going to get the Republican Party and members of the modern conservative movement, particularly like Supreme Court justices, to do the right thing is if they have pressure on them, if there are stakes to it. If it's just this academic legal theory, there's no debt ceiling crisis, Republicans got what they wanted, Biden caved to blackmail and extortion. What's to stop the the conservative supermajority on the Supreme Court to go, you know what, actually, no, you don't have the authority to invoke the 14th Amendment. You need to uh, do this via the debt ceiling negotiation. All that does is just kick the can down the road and put Biden at risk uh, for another situation like this. Okay, But there is the possibility that he's just saying this publicly, right, to put pressure back on lawmakers. Like, no, we got to do this by the book. It's on lawmakers. And then maybe when the time comes, if McCarthy doesn't cave. Biden is going to hit them with the you know the reverse trap card. Aha, 14th Amendment. Hopefully that's the case. Hopefully this is just a posture by President Biden and that he is fully prepared or becoming more fully prepared to invoke the 14th Amendment now in this situation if Kevin McCarthy doesn't fold. But between that and the clip from Byron Donalds, the reason I want to spend time on this, and I'll show you one other thing too, it's just really frustrating, the asymmetry of expectation. And we've talked about this in, in other videos, and I'm sure we'll talk about it again. The right and left, conservatives, moderates, slash centrists, um, uh, liberals, progressives, whatever, it seems like everybody, voters, civilians, news media, whatever, that we hold Democrats to a much higher standard of performative ethics than the Republican Party. And this poll to me is really frustrating. This is like a Harvard poll. And it says, who should cave to their who should cave their position to prevent a default? The Democrats or Republicans? 57%, according to this poll, of the voting public, which tends to lean Democrat, by the way, say that the president should fold, even though it's that the hostage should be the one to give in not the hostage taker. And this is coming from a voting base which has a bias towards Democrats. Do you see how dangerous this is? So my, my challenge to you if you're watching is, are you contributing to this? Are you an enlightened centrist or a moderate which has listed no matter what, no matter what they do, no matter what their bad faith is, no matter what the circumstances is, damn it, Democrats, you gotta go by the book in every single instance. Are you contributing to that? Do you know people who contribute to that? If you are contributing to that, stop. If you know people who contribute to that, that asymmetry of expectation, challenge them with this. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. What? We have two sides. It's supposed to be good faith. And if one side acts in consistent bad faith, the other side is just supposed to, again, whatever you guys want, just an infinite line of credit of good faith. <laughs> like Lucy pulling the football away, right? I know you pulled the football away again and again and again and again and again, but I'm going to run and try to kick it anyway and then be surprised when I land on my butt. We have to stop this because not only is just this hurting Democrats as a political bloc and makes our job much, much, much harder, it actually will have a deleterious effect on the country. The fact that there is so much public pressure, I shouldn't say so much, but there's increasing public pressure for the president to cave on this is only going to potentially hurt the country the next time Democrats play brinkmanship with the debt ceiling, which unless they're stopped, unless they're crushed in this confrontation, they will do again.